you know, World Cups are defining events. And so sometimes it's, it's good to just sit back and look at all that happened, not as a post-mortem, but happily. Let's look at some key moments, some key events, players that came up, heartwarming things that we saw at the World Cup. So let's start with key moments. There were so many, but uh, I've picked four. One came right at the beginning. I'm standing by the boundary rope. I'm getting ready for the presentation. Tend to get in three balls for Namibia. David Visa is playing a fabulous innings. He hits a big shot. I, I, I don't know how much they measure it. Would have been 75, 80 meters. Most days it's a six. You need 10 of three. It would have come down to four of two. It's caught on the boundary. It's caught on the boundary. Namibia go out. UAE win. Netherlands come in. Netherlands beat South Africa and Pakistan come through. Sometimes it's those little things that decide. But you could see the heartbreak for Namibia. The second event, probably the event, was 18.5 India versus Pakistan. It just had to be. 28 of 8 balls. Aris Rauf, one of the better bowlers in the world. And Virat Kohli plays a shot for the ages. Would he be able to play it again? It doesn't matter. Because he did. And, oh wow, what a moment. It led to the next one, then Pakistan under pressure, 18.5, what a moment. In many ways, this, was a, this World Cup was a story of Pakistan. And my third moment comes when Pakistan are, are gone. They're gone from the tournament. Not, not just a game against Zimbabwe, 43 for four against South Africa. And then the innings that Iftikhar plays, then the innings that Shada plays. Pakistan came out not timid, but firing and brave. Sometimes when you're pushed to the wall, you come out firing, you come out brave. And I think that led the path for Pakistan to go even further in the tournament. To rival the 18.5 was the rule of Fundamerva catch of David Miller. That is what sealed it for South Africa. That is what opened the door for Pakistan. Remember 37, 38, he's been out of the tournament for a while with back spasms. But rule of Fundamerva's heart is the size of this park I'm sitting in. And oh, it was it, just just to watch him. I can imagine him in my corner of my eye, still going and taking that catch. To me, those were the four defining moments. What are the events you look back at? It's been it feels like some time ago. But that West Indies team not going through stage one, that's ridiculous. Even given that you didn't have the Narayans and the Russells and the Hetmyers, no, that team had to go through. There are major problems there. What about Australia? Tepid, lukewarm. I thought Australia would be the powerful team of the tournament with the kind of batting lineup they had. But it's almost as if instead of turning up in t-shirt and shorts, they came up in a tuxedo. Very correct, very nice, but not explosive enough. India not going the distance with the power that, uh, that India had. But two main events, one Pakistan against Zimbabwe. But even more dramatic, and I thought Muzarbani and Angaraba were fantastic in that end. They're two bowlers to watch out for. But also, Zimbabwe, three, what, three runs to win, four runs to win. It's a free hit and they could not finish it. Zimbabwe finished that free hit. Wow, the whole group turns upside down. This group was a roller coaster in many ways. Who were the players to watch out for, the younger players? Arshdeep Singh, without a shadow of doubt. Took the new ball, took wickets, swung the ball, bowled shot, got the angles right, came back, bowled beautifully at the death. What a find he's been. I'm going with Sam Curran. You might say, what's the big deal? Sam Curran's been around for four years, but the manner in which Curran reinvented himself as a death bowler was, was just wonderful to see. Because he doesn't have the pace to come and scare you at the end, but the way Curran reinvented himself was fantastic. And I like Glenn Phillips. New Zealand needed that dominant presence in the middle. They don't always have many options to choose from, but he is some personality. Bowls off breaks, feels beautifully in the deep, runs hard as a free-stroking batsman, can keep wickets if you want. So he was the one bright spot in an otherwise sort of mixed kind of campaign for New Zealand. What are the heartwarming moments? Watch Joshua Little. How beautifully he bowled. Joshua Little, even in the big games against England, he bowled beautifully. Curtis Camphor from Ireland in that game against Scotland. When the game is gone, he pulled it out. The whole Netherlands bowling lineup. I mean, these are not pin up stars, but you look at Fred Klassen, Paul Funmaker, and Bas de Leader. Uh, there's so many. Brand Brandon Glover, Logan Van Beek. They just kept coming. Rule of Van der Merwe. And I think you're going to see a lot of, uh, of Tim Pringle. And just to see the way Netherlands played their approach was, was wonderful to see. And I think the most heartwarming of it all was what the supposedly smaller nations told us in this tournament. 
They said, we are here and we can win. And Sikandar Raza, what a story. Wants to be an Air Force pilot, he cannot go to study in Scotland, makes a name in Zimbabwe. You talk to him and you've got that Scottish accent, you know he's Pakistani. But just the freedom with which he played and then he came in and bowled and Zimbabwe rose and fell on Sikandar Raza's performances. I just, I just hope we see another two or three years of him. It was a good tournament. I enjoyed this tournament very much. I think there's something to be said in terms of tournaments doing something for bowlers, having large boundaries. It changed the whole dynamic of the World Cup. It was a very, very good World Cup.